What's going on, guys? Today, I wanted to do a video on uh, how I organize and archive my negatives. And as you see, it's a, a little bit different. Uh, we have a, a little bit of a darker setup going on. And I, I wanted to show you, you know, one of the things was my binder, which is a, a pretty stark white. So this becomes invisible. So and, and that wouldn't work very well if I want to show you something if, if you can't see it. Right. So, uh, so we had to make a little bit of a change. And I just want to preface the video with, you know, this method that, that I use, uh, it's not for everyone, okay? It, it's, it's not for the faint of heart, okay? Uh, because it can be kind of destructive. And you've, you've probably gathered by looking at the, the stuff on the, the table here that uh, we have a hole punch and we have some negatives that have some holes in them with said hole punch. Now, I actually, I got this idea from, I was reading some articles, and I forget where it was, if it was on a, a post or a petapixel, I, it was somewhere on the internet, and I was reading it, and it was about a guy, I think his name was Roy Stryker, and to me, that sounds like some kind of a badass military guy, right? Like some big general. What's your excuse? Whatever. You know, I think his name was Roy Stryker, and he was an editor, and what he would do is he would get the photographer's roles in and any, you know, any photos that he didn't like got the clip. And, you know, a lot of the photographers that sent the stuff into him didn't like this for obvious reasons, you know. But anyway, that's that's history. And, and that's, you know, that's what happened. So I, I read about this and I thought, you know what, that's a great idea because I used to just take a Sharpie and run a line through the negatives to, to kind of help me think, OK, this is not a keeper. And uh, once I read about that hole punch, I mean, you know, holes are a lot easier to see than a little line. So I, I kind of went that route. So the case I use is just off B&H. I think it was like 10 bucks. It's not a, a weather tight or moisture proof, you know, waterproof. It's just basically a, a three ring binder that's has some space in it for your negatives. Basically, you know, in this binder, uh, I just have these archival sheets. I think a print file makes them. They make them in different different counts for 35 millimeter. I think I got five, six, and four, depending on how I cut them. And then I also have some for 120 as well. But basically, you can see here that what I'll do, and I apologize for the glare because I, I couldn't uh, couldn't get that out with with this camera. But you can kind of see, you know, I used to have little lines through them, and then I just went back and I punched them and it just, it helps me see, okay, you know, I've already decided that these are what I want to keep and, and, you know, I've made a final decision. And basically my, my process on, on making decisions is I will take all my negatives and I shove them in a, a giant textbook that I have and, and I'll let them sit there for months. And, you know, I do that for, for two reasons. The, the first one is I, I want them to pretty much, you know, flatten out. So that that kind of helps. And then the, the second one is I want to kind of be removed from the image just a little bit. Uh, you know, we all have like an emotional attachment to or most of us, you know, have an emotional attachment to these images that we shoot. They could kind of maybe seem a little bit better than they actually are. Um, not the case for you, right? I, I don't know. But it, for me, right? Some of these images, I, I, I come back and I look and I say, ah, oh, it's not as good as I thought it was, you know? For that reason, that's kind of why I like to separate myself a little bit. You know, if that emotional attachment is still there, like if I feel an emotional attachment or if I feel the image again, you know, a couple months down the road, then I know it's, it's probably a keeper. I'm, I'm a little bit, I don't know, say more heavy handed when it comes to like landscapes, still lifes, uh, anything that's not a family photo. You know, family photos, I, I pretty much don't chop at all because, you know, the imperfection in the family photos is really the perfection. You know, that's what you want. You want uh, real life. So, uh, you know, and, and who wants to <laughs> who wants to go through and punch holes in your family? Right. That's kind of brutal. But anyway, so that's my process and it's, it's worked for me thus far. So I guess that's pretty much it, guys. You know, I'm, I'm curious to, to ask, you know, what, what do you do? If you guys save your negatives, do you even save them or, or do you, you throw them away? And if you do save them, do you do something like this with a binder? And, and if so, how do you mark them? You know, I'm, I'm always curious to, to find out different ways. And, you know, this is what I've done for a little while now and it's worked for me. But, you know, there may be a, a better way. So just drop a comment and, and let me know, you know, what, what do you do? 
And if this video was helpful or kind of entertaining, if you could do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. And every couple days I'm coming out with new content. Some stuff is, you know, general how-tos or overviews. Other stuff is uh, camera reviews. Everything's pretty much film photography related. So if, if that's your kind of thing, then, you know, go ahead, click subscribe, and uh, you'll get notified every time we release something. So I guess until next time, we'll see you. You can kind of get some creative, I don't know, creative images going on uh, like that.